Here is an exam review for grade 11 students taking pre-calculus or functions. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we are taking 61 questions from the past test papers to practice for the exam. Now, functions 11 is a pre-calculus course. In this, there are eight units. These include functions and characteristics, algebraic expressions and operations, quadratic functions, exponential functions, trigonometric ratios, identities and equations, sinusoidal functions, sequences and series, Pascal's triangle, binomial expansion, and financial exp applications. The distribution of questions is also given. Here are the questions to share with you. From unit one, we'll begin with domain and range. You may find solution of these questions in my YouTube channel. Well, in case you want to learn from me, feel free to send an email on the address given. Once you do domain range, it's a good idea to practice for inverse functions. We have taken all kinds of functions which are popular in test papers. Also write down domain and range. See how the domain and range of the function and the inverse are related. Many times you may have to restrict the domain of the function to make the inverse as a function. Practice those kinds of examples taking quadratic equations. Now these quadratic equations given in vertex form and standard form uh, are very important to look into once again. If you are given standard form of equation, the first step is write it in the vertex form and then swap x and y and find the inverse. Here is a challenge problem for unit 1, which is given that g of x plus y equals to g of x times g of y, for all real numbers, find g of minus 8 if g of 4 is equal to 3. Now, most of the time, students get around 80-90% marks. But to get above 90% marks, we have to look into some challenge questions and thinking and application questions. They should go right for you. So this is extremely important question whose solution is given in my playlist. Now let's move on to the second unit, which is basically we are trying to understand how do we operate with different algebraic operations, right? So here we'll just expand and simplify, work with radicals, move on to work with exponents, right? Part B is slightly tricky, though not very difficult. Then we'll move on to work with the rational expressions. Now in rational expressions, you need to state the restrictions. When you're multiplying two rational expressions, then the denominators should not be zero. But when you divide, in that case, the divisor you have to look into carefully. Both numerator and denominator of the divisor should be considered for restrictions. Well, as you understand, division is reciprocal of multiplication. Perfect. And then two examples just to add and subtract the rational expressions, right? Take common denominator, simplify, and get your answer. Now let's move on to the third unit, which is quadratic functions, where our focus this time is to work on quadratic and linear system, which is the very first question, and says, what values of slope of line would make it tangent to the parabola? Extremely interesting question. A parabola and a line may intersect, may not intersect, and if it intersects, it could be at one or two points. Now, when will it be tangent to the parabola? Remember the discriminant, right? So you need to analyze the discriminant, get the answer. Part B. Find the quadratic equation in standard form whose roots are 3 plus minus square root 5 and the y-intercept is 12. There are many ways to do it. I'll discuss with you one of the best ways to do. Remember product and sum for standard equation. That is the method you should be applying, correct? 
question in the C part and the D part are the application questions where the application is given to you, right? Simple working with the quadratic equation that should not be critical. However, you should understand the units and interpret them properly in your answer. So that could be a catch. Let's move on to unit four, which is exponential equations. We're just solving exponential equations in this particular case, taking these four uh, equations. Unit five. Now in this unit, we are taking trigonometric basic concepts where trigonometric ratios are being considered, right? So the five examples will give you good idea for questions based on trigonometric ratios. And then here is a communication question very important communication question where you might use special triangles to find the perimeter of the given triangle. Perfect. Have a good look at it. Question number, uh, we'll move on to a periodic function here. As you know, sinusoidal functions are all periodic. This is unit six. So in unit six, we talk about periodic functions, write equations, model. So here you have to just match the equation with the given graph. Coming back to unit five, we'll talk about trigonometric identities. These are four very important identities seen in last test papers. I'm sure at least two of them might come in your test paper. And then we have the equations. Now, I've taken examples where x is between zero to 360 degrees. Some of the IB students might be working in radians, so you can actually do in radians also. The last question here relates to finding a general solution. You may look into my channel to understand how do we find general solution, right? Feel free to send an email on the address given to learn directly from me. Let's move on with applications based on unit six. So in these applications, you may have to write the equation, understand how do we work with. These are very important critical thinking and application questions which make huge difference in your marks. Perfect. Let's move on to the next unit, which is discrete functions. In discrete functions, we talk about sequences and series. Mainly, our focus is on arithmetic sequences and series and geometric sequences and series. However, Question number one itself, which is based on recursive formula, is a very difficult question and is seen in many test papers. It makes huge difference. Solution of this you may find in my playlist. Then Pascal's triangle and its relation with binomial expansion. This is another very important chapter. See how Pascal's triangle can be used. What are the properties of Pascal's triangles? We are exploring two of them, which is some of the terms and some of the squares of the terms in a row. Perfect. And then the, we'll focus on binomial expansion. The last unit, which is financial applications, we deal with simple interest, compound interest, annuities, which uh, include present and future values. So with that, we have our set of 61 questions for you to practice. I hope you find them interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.